Welcome, I'm Dr. Lacey Kim, and this is Sharice Hoagland. We're here at the Carlson College of Veterinary Medicine and the Lois Bates Atchison Veterinary Teaching Hospital to show you the equine physical and musculoskeletal exam. Now we'll go ahead and do the front end portion of our musculoskeletal exam. I like to start at the neck. I'll take my hands and put them on either side of the neck and squeeze the vertebral body and the cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae are about the width of my hand. So I'll move my hands a hand's width and place some pressure across both sides of the neck, palpating for pain and muscular asymmetry. And I'll go down and look at the scapula, palpating the scapula for pain. And then we'll go ahead and change positions. And I'll look at the shoulder and brachiocephalicus muscle. This is the brachiocephalicus muscle. It's important in that horses get, late, get sore here when they have a lameness. This muscle is used to create the head bob, the lifting of the head on the sore limb. So this can be quite sore when a horse is lame on this limb. Move down to the shoulder. Shoulder joint is right here. I like to place my hands on the greater tubercle, the cranial and the caudal portion of the greater, greater tubercle. Then my index finger is right at the joint, so I can palpate the joint for effusion and pain. I'll move along the humerus to the elbow joint. I like to palpate the elbow joint and the notch between the humerus and the lecranon. It's right here in this horse, so I'll palpate that for pain and effusion. Then I'll go ahead and go down, further down in the limb, palpating the whole way for any sort of swelling or asymmetry. We'll move down to the carpus. I like to lift the limb at this point. So I'll lift the leg to look at the carpus. The main joints that we're interested in in the horse and the carpus are the radiocarpal joint, which is up here, and the middle carpal joint, which is lower. There's two pouches for each of those joints, one on either side of the extensor tendon. So I'll palpate those both for effusion. I'll also do a range of motion test where I'll lift the limb. I should be able to get the fetlock to go, go ahead and hit all the way back to the elbow region. It should completely flex, this is normal. All right, then we'll move on to the soft tissues in the back of the cannon bone area. There's three important soft tissues that you can palpate in, independently. The superficial digital flexor tendon, the deep digital flexor tendon, and the suspensory ligament. You can palpate those structures all the way down from the knee to the fetlock region. I palpate each of those independently and look for swelling and pain. The suspensory origin is right in the back of the cannon bone. So in order to palpate the suspensory ligament proximally, I have to push my thumb against the cannon bone, medial and laterally, to palpate that. At mid cannon, you can palpate it between your fingers. So I check there for any sort of swelling or pain when I, when I press on that area. And then I'll move on down to the fetlock region. So there's two important synovial structures in the fetlock region. One is the fetlock itself, the metacarpal phalangeal joint. I can palpate the joint here. It exists between the cannon bone and the sesamoid bones. There's also a deep digital, sorry, a digital flexor tendon sheath here. And that holds the tendinous structures. It exists from the fetlock area all the way down to the pastern area. Finally, I'll press on the deep digital flexor tendon far down in the pastern region and feel for pain there. Next, we'll move on to our hoof tester examination. Now we'll go ahead and do our hoof tester examination. Again, we'll lift up the leg, pushing the horse over with my shoulder and lifting the limb. I take the limb and I put it between my knees, stepping across between my knees so I can use both of my hands. Then I'll use the hoof tester on the medial, the axial, and the lateral side of the foot to feel if there's any pain there. I'll look at the foot to see if there's any areas of abnormality, and I can also palpate across the heels, being aware of not touching the coronary band. Thanks so much for participating.